What's up, everybody? You are watching a brand new Game Nights. The show is brought to you by Wizards of the Coast. Now, we have a very exciting episode today. We are playing with the brand new cards from Commander 2020, the pre-cons. And also, we have two awesome guests. Mm -hmm. We have Alias V, the Pro Tour commentator and Twitch streamer, and the long-awaited return of everybody's favorite, Cassius Marsh, the NFL player. But before we get into it, we are showcasing a bunch of awesome new cards today. It's Commander Christmas. You need a place to pick up those cards so head on over to cardkingdom.com slash command zone get your singles get your pre-cons get all the product you need to start brewing around some of these exciting new cards so again cardkingdom.com slash command zone start expanding that collection right now yeah i'm really excited about all these new cards they look really really sweet i know everybody else out there is as well mm -hmm. And another way to support all of our content is directly if you go to patreon.com slash command zone, you can contribute and get a bunch of uh, awesome perks and rewards. Yeah. You can hang out with Jimmy and myself on our Discord each and every day. Also, you get to watch game nights before anybody else. Yep. And don't forget, stick around to the end of the episode because we're doing tons of giveaways. And if you want to win that, first, you got to find out who wins the game. All right, let's do it. How's it, everybody? Welcome back to a new episode of Game Nights. On today's show, we've got a returning guest, one of your favorites who hasn't been on in quite a while. Hey, everybody, it's Cassius Marsh, NFL defensive end. Hi. And I'm really excited to be back here on Game Nights. It's been way too long. And we have a brand new guest on the show. She's never been here before, but you might recognize her from the Magic Broadcast world. What's cracking, everyone? I'm Ailey, also known as Alias V. You may know me from the commentary team for the Mythic Invitational, the Mythic Championships, and most recently, the World Championship. I stream six days a week on Twitch, and I also have a YouTube channel with tons of magic content. And I'm really excited to be here for my first ever appearance on Game Nights. So today we're playing with the brand new Commander pre-constructed decks that are themed around a Coria layer of behemoths. I grew up watching the Godzilla movies, Kaiju movies. <laughs> and Ikoria looks like it's gonna have a ton of that theme. That sort of giant monster bash. I know I'm gonna have a blast playing them on the battlefield. So the deck I chose is Gavi, Nest Warden. <laughs> this deck is all about cycling. I get to cycle for free, which is crazy because a lot of cards have abilities tied to cycling. And on top of that, I get to make 2-2 two -two cat dinosaurs, which are like the cutest tokens ever. Yeah, I said cute. NFL players think things are cute too. <laughs> so the deck I'm gonna be playing is Calamax the Storm Sire. <laughs> this deck is all about instants. So as long as Calamax is tapped, you get to double up all your instant spells. Whenever you cast one of those, you're gonna get two instead of one. That's just extra value tacked on to every card you play. Plus the whole time, Calamax keeps getting bigger. So I'm gonna wreck my opponents at the best time during their turn. So my deck is Cathral Aspect Warper. This strategy revolves around a new mechanic, ability counters. So usually we put 1-1 one -one counters on creatures, but now we're able to put ability counters on so we can give something Vigilance, Trample, Menace, Lifelink, Death Touch. This is gonna be Build Your Own Monster, and I cannot wait. The deck I'm playing today is Otrimi, the Ever Playful. This deck features a brand new mechanic called Mutate, which lets me put my creatures onto my other creatures and mutate them together to make something even scarier than before. That means I'm gonna be creating some crazy monster mashups and bashing my opponents for a ton of damage. Okay, I'm ready to play with the new commander product. Let's do this. All right, let's battle. All right, let's play. To the battlefield. All right, welcome everyone to the table. First things first, we must reveal these awesome Ikoria Ultra Pro playmats. Beautiful. That's it right there. We did it. Alias, because it is your first time at the table, you know what that means. Oh, yeah. Cash, would you like to do the honors? Of course I would. I dub thee Sir Alias the Fifth. Arise! I'd like to thank the Academy. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Game Nights. Only one may stand. All right, everyone ready? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's play. 
I will start things off by drawing a card, and I will play a forest and pass to you, Alias. I shall draw as per the rules, and I will play Scour Barons, gain a life, pass to you. All right, draw, play a Smoldering Crater tapped, and pass turn. Okay, nice. I will draw. I will play a Mountain. Pass turn, Jimmy. Tap Mountain. <gasps> Everyone else was tapping in. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I don't know. All right, I will draw for turn, and I will play a Swamp and pass to you. Untap, draw. I will play Evolving Wilds, pass turn. Untap, draw, play a Island for turn, pass turn. Okay, I will untap, I will draw, and then I will play a Mountain, and I'll tap two, and I'll play an Arcane Signet. That's nice. Ooh, that's pretty good. Josh has the first piece of ramp on the battlefield, and it's actually kind of important because he is the last player in the turn order. So this helps him catch up a little bit. Okay, I will draw for turn. I'll play a Sunken Hollow. I'll tap three and play the Trumpeting Gnar. <laughs> So here we get our first look at the brand new mechanic from Akoria, Mutate. Jimmy's whole deck is built around that, and we know that his commander, next turn for four mana, can mutate onto this card, make him a 3-3, and then he's gonna have a 6-6 in play with a bunch of abilities. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be a little bit scary, which makes sense because monsters are usually scary. <laughs> Those were trumpets for anybody who did not know. Those are very good, yes. On your end step, I'm gonna crack Evolving Wilds. Go find a forest, and enters the battlefield tapped. Great. All right, untap, and draw my card for turn. I'm gonna play a Swamp, and then I'm going to cast Abs and Charm. Ooh. Ooh. I'm gonna draw two cards and lose two life. So I can play this card at instant speed, but I'm a little impatient, so I wanna play it now. Draw two cards, go up to eight in hand, and have to discard something, because my commander cares about things in the graveyard. So I wanna get this going as quickly as I can. Go down to 39, I'm gonna move to my end step. On your end step, I'll tap two and cycle Vizier of Tumbling Sands. I will untap your Sunken Hollow, Jimmy. Thanks, man, I won't forget it. <laughs> it's gonna make a huge difference in this game. Draw my card. So I know that I'm losing out on some value here early in the game because my commander's not out there yet, but it's most important that I smooth out my early land drops and my hand. I will go to untap. Hang on, hang on. I have eight cards, so I need to discard. Mm. Uh, discarding Hornet Queen. Ooh. That has death touch. And flying. Oh. <laughs> go for it. Okay. Untap and draw my card return. Play another island. And then I will tap three and play Rogren Crystal. That's cool. Pretty good. This is a new cycle of mana rocks from this set. And they all tap for three colors of mana and they have cycling. So it's a cycle of cycling cards. And then I will pass my turn. Okay, I will untap, I will draw. Okay, I'm going to float a red mana. Okay. Then I'm going to play Simic Growth Chamber, which will bounce the mountain that I tapped. And then I will add a blue and another red, and I will play Frantic Search. Mm. So I draw two cards and then discard two cards, and I untap three lands. Oof. So the good thing about this card right now is I get to look at a couple extra cards out of my deck, smooth out my draws, and it's gonna untap that bounce land I just played, so I'll have mana held up for more instants I can play later. I'll discard Channeled Force and Artifact Mutation, and then I will untap two lands, because I don't have three. <laughs> and that's it, you can go, Jimmy. Okay, I will untap and I'll draw for turn. Um, I'm going to play Dark Water Catacombs, and I will tap four mana, and I'm going to mutate Otrimi the Ever Playful onto my Trumpeting Gnar. Uh -oh. So you're gonna put it on top, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be on top, it's gonna be a 6-6 six, six with all of the abilities of both cards. Wow. Yikes. That's pretty cool. And that's gonna trigger its second ability whenever it mutates, and that'll create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. I recognize that beast. Yeah. Beast mode. He looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Mutate's a really cool mechanic, it's something we haven't seen before, and basically you can just dump a whole bunch of creatures onto one thing, make this massive thing that has every single ability, and because the other creature was already on the battlefield, Jimmy gets to attack this turn. So he's got so much power on the battlefield, it's crazy. So uh, obviously I can't attack the beast, Cassius, and he also untapped my land, yeah. and well, whatever, Josh, I'm just swinging at you for six. <laughs> okay, I have no blocks. 
Ouch. And of course, Jimmy smacks me with it. Now it is still Otrimi, so that is commander damage. I will take six and go to 34. So yeah, there's that whole Baron Von Count thing. There's the Mind Slaver stuff. Jimmy and I definitely have history and uh, looking at his board right now, looking at mine, I'm not liking how this is shaping up. All right, and that's gonna do it for my turn. I'll pass it to you, Alias. Alrighty, untap everything. Draw my card for turn. All right, I'm gonna float to green, play Golgari Rot Farm, bounce forest, and then I'm gonna cast Nyx Weaver. Okay. Mm hmm He's gonna be a decent blocker for me for the time being, but the important thing that it does is every upkeep, it mills me for two, gets things into my graveyard, which I really, really, really need for my commander. So it doesn't look super impressive, but over time, it's gonna get me some value. That's my turn, go for it. Uh, on your end step, I will tap for a blue, and I will basic land cycle Ash Barons. I will go find a Plains and put that in my hand. Nice. Okay. All right, untap, and then I will draw for turn. I think it's time, guys. Uh -huh. I'll cast my commander, Gavi Nest Warning. Nice. Sweet. So now my commander's on the board. I'm gonna be cycling, drawing cards, and just finding everything that I wanna find. And on top of that, making a ton of tokens and, and having a board state. So I'm all set up, ready to go. The engine is has started. And then I will cycle Desert of the True. Draw a card. Okay. That'll trigger Gavi. And I will get a, a dinosaur cat token. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. I don't care about cycling. Have you seen those cat tokens? They're so cute. I feel like they did this on purpose. It is adorable. <laughs> it's like one of the cutest tokens ever created. Yeah, it's pretty cute, I guess. I, I don't know. I'm more of a dog person. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will pass my turn. Okay, on your end step, I'm gonna pay a green and a blue. I'm gonna cast Growth Spiral. Ah, nice. So I'm gonna draw a card, and then I'm gonna put a land from my hand into play. It will be an Izzard Boiler Works, which will bounce my mountain back to my hand. Yep. And then I will untap, and I will draw. Um, there's a 6-6 six, six trample thingy over there. I'm definitely swinging at you again. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna tap four, and I'm gonna play Calamax the Storm Sire. <laughs> the ability to copy all the instant spells that I play is very, very strong. That's just free cards every time you play a card. But it needs to be tapped in order for him to use its ability, which means, fortunately for us, that he can't do anything with it right now. And then I'm going to tap for one and play a soul ring. What? Okay. So I played Arcane Signet, I Growth Spiral, put an extra land into play, and now I've got this soul ring. This means I have way more mana than all the other players at the table. This is gonna set me up really well moving into the mid game. I'm feeling great. And then I will pass the turn. Okay, I will untap and draw for turn. All right, I'm gonna tap four and I'm gonna play Kazura, Ruthless Stalker. Uh-oh. Yikes. Kazura has partnered with Ukima, Stalking Shadow. So I'm gonna go look through my library for that card and put it into my hand. This card is really good here because looking around the board, I don't really see anyone that can block my attacking army, which is great for me because they're gonna grow in size when they deal combat damage. And if they can't block me now, it's gonna be even harder for them to block me in the future as my creatures continue to grow and grow. Um, I will go to combat. And Josh, I'm gonna swing at you again with the 6-6. Six, six, and Ilias, I'm gonna swing at you with the 3-3 three, three token. All right, I will take three. Ow. Uh, and then I don't want to block, so I will take six more. I'll go to 28, and now I have 12 commander damage from that thing. Wow. So it's turn five, I've taken 12 damage, but more importantly, it's 12 commander damage. That thing has trample, it's a mutate deck, it's conceivable that he'll be able to pump it in some way, so I could be looking at death really, really soon, actually, if I'm not careful. All right, that combat is gonna trigger Kazur, and both creatures are gonna get a plus one, plus one counter. Bleep, 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 bleep. So it's a 7-7 seven, seven and a 4-4 four, four now? Yep. So Jimmy's taking the early lead in this game and uh, he's picked a target, it's Josh. I'm just like kind of just watching them just beat each other up and, and just trying to stay out of the way right now. All right, I'll pass turn to you. All right, on tap. At the beginning of my upkeep, next Weaver will trigger. Put the top two cards of my library into my graveyard. Okay. I'm gonna draw for turn and then I'm gonna play Myriad Landscape Tapped. Okay. Yes. And everyone's got things in the battlefield, so I think I'm gonna keep my spooter here and pause turn. 
All right, I will untap and draw. So I pass the turn, I've got nothing to do, no permanents in my hand that I can play at this point. All I've got pretty much is a hand of removal and I'm looking for something to remove. I will cycle rooting Moloch. Oh, nice. And it's free because of my commander. That's cool. And then I will draw. Okay, uh, because I drew my second card, Gavi will trigger, and I will put a dinosaur cat into play. Okay, they're pretty cute. It's cuter when there's two of them together. Actually, that's more scary when he's got more of them. I take that back. And then I will cast Espira Supreme Judge. Oh. So you're gonna get a, a lot of benefits from this card. Two things could happen. Either people aren't gonna attack you because they don't want you to draw cards, or people will attack you and you'll draw cards. Either way, I'm good, I'm happy. I will pass turn. Oh, Sick. All right, well, I'm not definitely not attacking you now. I appreciate that though, you know, I really do. Okay, I will untap, I will draw. So I'm really worried about Jimmy's commander because of that commander damage. Am I gonna just have to play and chump block with a bunch of stuff? That feels really bad. Maybe somebody will help me out. I have to attack with this thing. I wanna block with it. Oh yeah, it has to be tapped in order to use its ability. Yeah. But I don't wanna just be open up to 11 damage from Jimmy. <laughs> hey, who says the beast is coming at you? Because if I don't have any blockers. I'll tell you what, I can take care of the big beastie there for you. What? You can take care of the big thing? Yeah, I'll take care of the big thing. Okay, for I appreciate that. Well, okay. I'll call in a favor later. Okay, deal. Jeez. <laughs> so, pretty simple deal. I will take care of Jimmy's creature, and then Josh will owe me something in return. A get out of jail free card, if you will. All right, I'm gonna start off by tapping five. I'm gonna play Paco, Arcane Retriever. Cute. Paco, Paco. <laughs> so, that's gonna trigger partner, and I'll go find Haldan, Avid Arcanist. <laughs> and put that into my hand. Wow. Man, this partner with combo is pretty scary. Paco's gonna swing out and basically draw Josh four cards. Then how then gives him the ability to cast them out of exile. So that's a huge amount of card advantage. Not to mention, Paco is going to be growing and growing over this entire time. And then I will go to combat. And Jimmy, I'm going to swing at you with both creatures. Okay. So on attack, Paco will trigger and everybody exile the top card of their library. So I'll put fetch counters on Tyam, Luminous Enigma, Fertilid, Jace, Architect of Thought, and Astral Drift. Wow, are you kidding me? Come on. I didn't have any choice about it. I know, but that <laughs> hurts right there. All right, and then I'll exile these cards with a fetch counter. And then two of those are not creatures. So Paco gets two 1-1 one -one counters. And that's now a 5-5. Five -five. Dang. Yikes. That? Okay, so that is nine damage total. Ow. Another 31. And four of that is commander damage. Oof. How you like me now, Jimmy? Your creatures aren't the only ones that can get bigger. And then I will tap three, and I will play Haldan, Avid Arcanist. So good. And I will pass the turn. All right, I will untap, and I will draw for turn. So Josh and Jimmy are in like full blood war mode. Like Jimmy's hitting him, and Josh is giving it right back. It's it's funny to watch because I'm sitting at 40 life, and both of them are just like slowly taking down. So it, it's a good position to be in. Okay, well we'll see what happens. I'll go to combat. I will swing Kazura at you, Alias, and the rest of my creatures at Josh. All right, well, these two have made the deal against me, so there's not much I can do about that. I'm just gonna keep swinging, force it out of their hands. All right, I will uphold my deal and I will blood curdle your big monster thing. Oh gosh. Sweet. The ever playful Otrimi is gonna go into the command zone. Then my next weaver will get menace. Okie dokie. Ability counters are so cool. They are. Yeah, that's a cool concept. Uh, okay. Okay, blocking time. I have no blocks. And I will go down to 24. I'll take three. Go down to 33. Okay, that's gonna trigger Kazur, and both of these creatures are gonna get a plus one, plus one counter. That's pretty good. Yikes. This is awesome. Ailey lives up to her side of the bargain, gets rid of Jimmy's commander. I only take a little bit of damage. I'm feeling a lot better about this game now. All right, I'm going to just pass the turn to you, Alias. All right, untap. I'm really scared of that card advantage engine Josh just made with that Haldan, so I hope that someone else removes it, but if they don't, I need to be ready to pull the trigger myself. It doesn't feel good, but I think it's what I have to do. Uh, at the beginning of upkeep, Nick's Weaver is gonna mill two planes and a Bonder's ornament. Nice. And then drop a turn. Alrighty, now's probably not the time to do it, but I'm getting impatient, so I'm going to cast Cathril Aspect Warper. 
Oh, oh, oh. very nice. Uh, so in my graveyard, I've just got one creature so far, and it is the Hornet Queen. So I'll give the Death Touch to the Nixweaver Weaver, and flying to Cathril. He'll also become a 5-5. Five five. Ailey really able to customize her creatures here, choose where she wants the abilities to go. She suddenly has a 5-5 five five flyer. She has a really good blocker. This is a pretty average case or even weak scenario for her commander, and yet it's still pretty good. And then uh, I don't want to attack into anyone, so I'm going to pause it into you. During your end step, I'm going to cycle Valiant Rescuer. And it's free because of my commander. Oh, nice. I love that free draw. cycling. So jealous. Uh, untap, I will draw. And I won't get a kitty because it's my first draw of the turn. Bummer. I'll play Martial Impetus, and I will target Kethril. Whoa, what? You may think it's a little weird that I'm buffing her creature, but it's got the goad effect. It can't attack me and it has to attack every turn. So now this is Josh and Jimmy's problem, it's not my issue. This is a new cycle of cards from the Ikoria Precons, and it's almost like it's better than Cassius removing it. Because of Goad, it can't attack him. So rather than kill the thing, he turned it into a weapon that's now working for him. Let's see here. Josh, I will make you a deal right now. Okay. If you swing at me with a smaller creature, yeah. then I will not swing at you for six right now. Will you not eat my smaller creature when I swing? I will not eat your smaller <laughs> okay. creature as well. All right. Deal. All right. So Cassius and I make a deal here where I'm basically gonna swing into him with a creature he can block for free just so he can draw a card. This is good for me because I already made a deal with Ailey and now I'm making a deal with another player at the table and my only antagonist is now Jimmy and I'm okay with that. Okay, I will play Azorius Chancery and bounce an island to my hand. I'll move to attack step. Uh -huh. I will swing at Jimmy with two dinosaur cats. Okay, well, I'll team up on Jimmy has begun. I will take four and go to <laughs> that's, 27. That's so not true at all. I mean, you you just have no blockers. Like, that's the way it goes. Um, is that it for you? Yeah, no, I uh, will pass my turn. Okay, we'll I know Josh is already coming at me with a bunch of damage, so I'm going to cast Beast Within targeting Haldan. I just hope that this act of goodwill does not go forgotten. Okay, so Haldan will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. And in his place, I will make a Cassius Beast token. That's nice. Ah, uh, so he kills my Haldan, which is kind of a big blow because that was what was giving me access to the cards that were exiled by Paco. I was counting on that card advantage to really get me through the mid game here. So that hurts. Okay, and that's it? Yeah. Then I will untap and I will draw. All right. Cash, I will uphold our deal. I will attack you with yourself, the beast token. <laughs> and then Jimmy, I will attack you with my commander and Paco. So there's two triggers, Paco and Esperia. So Cash, you get to draw first. All right, draw. And then everybody got to exile the top card of their library. I put a fetch counter on oh, them. Yeah. So I get a dual caster mage, psychosis crawler, island and death sprout. And two of them are non-creatures. So Paco will become a 7-7. Seven, seven. Oof, wow. Those will all be exiled with a fetch counter on them. Unfortunately, have no way for that to matter anymore. So even though I don't have Haldan anymore, so I can't cast those cards that are being exiled by Paco, it's still good because he's still growing and he's pretty big at this point. Okay, now we go to blocks. Sure. I will block the 3-3 three, three beast with Gavi. They'll bounce off each other. All right. I have no blocks, so I'll take 11 and go to 16. Oh, geez. Okay, then I'm gonna play Halimar Depths, which will trigger, and I will look at the top three cards in my library and then put them back in any order. That's pretty good. So I'll put them back like that. And then my deck is about instants, so I suppose that I'll just pass the turn. Okay, I'm going to untap and draw for the turn. I will play a Dismal Backwater and gain a life. Woo. Here you go. Wow, things got really hairy really fast for me. Not only am I at the lowest life total, but everyone at the table has done some kind of deal that isn't in my favor. I think it's time to reach out and maybe calm the waters a little bit. Josh, do you want to end the blood feud? Are you, are you, yeah. I mean, it's costing us both because I'm down to like three cards. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, the, the war has temporarily ended. Like hostilities could, they could, they could come back. But at any like, time, yeah, yeah. We're taking a breather. So this little feud with Jimmy has taken its toll on both of us. Our life totals are low, especially Jimmy's. So if he's willing to hit the pause button, I am too. Because we're just concentrating on each other. It really is beneficial to Alien Cash. 
So I'm going to tap five mana and cast Animus Awakening for X equals to four. Oh my gosh, here we go. This card's a bit risky right now because I don't actually know what's on the top of my deck. And what if I hit zero lands off it? I don't have the best of luck on this show. So, so I reveal the top four cards in my library, put all land cards from among them on the battlefield tapped. Oh, come on! Three lands and a oh. Manascape Refractor. You got three That's off of it? So Heck good. yeah, let's go! These three lands will enter the battlefield tapped. One of them was Thornwood Falls, so that will give me a life. And then the Manscaped Refractor will go to the bottom of my library. Hey, not bad. I got three lands out of the top four cards. This puts me up a bunch of mana. It's going to give me a lot more flexibility. I'm really glad that I made that deal with Josh now. That's going to do it for me. I'll pass this in to you, Alias. Thank you. I'll untap. Next we will trigger. Mill two. Any keywords? Hexproof. Oh crap. Hexproof. Oof. Draw for turn. And then I'm getting a little bit concerned about this card draw cat creation nonsense over here, Cash. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cost Predatory Impetus on my Nyx Weaver. Ooh, rah, rah. So my plan here is to enchant my own creature, make it so it has to be blocked. It's got Death Touch and Menace. So whatever it swings into, it's going to kill. My target is Cash and his creatures. You never like to hear when a player is like not feeling your side of the board and, and feels like they need to do something, but got a little trick up my sleeve, some new fire from the uh, commander set. Uh, response, I will cast Fierce Guardianship and it will cost me no mana because I control my commander. Whoa, <laughs> wait, it's free? Okay, wow, this is one of, if not the best new cards from the commander pre-cons this year. It's a free counter spell if you have your commander out. It's really good for Cassius in this situation, obviously, but I just can't wait to get this card and put it into all my commander decks. Wow. Well, uh, I can't do anything about that, so yeah, you counter my thing. <laughs> All right, that kind of screws up my plans, so... Plan B, you got any reach? I don't. Well, I'm gonna move to combat and I'm going to attack Jimmy with my Cathal. Okay, I can't block, so that means I'll take six commander damage. And I'll go to 12. Oh boy. I don't want to do anything else, so turn's yours. Untap and draw. And then I will play Shabraz, the Sky Shark. <laughs> Sky Shark. Yes. Nice. So if Cash's deck behaves, this thing is going to get so many counters on. It's going to get so much life. Could be a threat. Got to keep an eye on that one. I mean, I'm not even sure what to say about this card. I guess maybe I'm distracted by the fact that it's a flying shark. Da -dum. Da -dum. Da -dum. And because it is partnered with Braylon Skyshark Rider, I will go and search for Braylon. Put that in my hand. Makes sense. I'll declare attack up. Sure. Okay. And I will swing a sparrow at Josh. Okay. And it's a 6-4? It is a 6-4. All right, before damage, I'm going to tap 5, and I'm going to play Prophetic Bolt, targeting Asperia. That's not nice. And then Calamax is going to copy it, because it's my first instant spell. Well, no, I don't like that. So obviously I got to kill that big flyer that's attacking me, but I think I also want to get rid of that Death Touch Reach Spider that Ailey's got, because it's just making everybody scared to attack her, and if they're scared to attack her, they're more likely to attack me. Don't touch my spider. Don't touch my spider. I sort of want to kill that I'm, big spider. The shield's down you. I'm calling, oh, I'm calling my favor. No oh, killing spider. She, she did it. She, she did, did it. She did it. Okay. Hold on, Josh. Just a second there. Remember that deal we made? I'm cashing in my get a jail free card and you do not kill my spider. No touchy. I forgot about that. Okay. <laughs> um, I will honor my deal. Okay. And I'll do the shark. Wow. You serious? I mean, it was coming at me. <laughs> See you, bro. That's yeah. fine. So Josh gets rid of both my flyers and my only real draw engine on the board. This is not cool. This sucks. Okay. And then I will look at the top four cards in my library and put one in my hand and the rest on the bottom. But I will do that twice for the two prophetic bolts. That's so good. I'm going to put this one in my hand, these three on the bottom, then I'm going to do that again. Jeez. So good. Uh, and then I'm going to put this one into my hand and put these three onto the bottom. All right. And Calamax gets a plus one, plus one counter because I copied an instant. So it's now five, five. Ah, uh, yeah, that's all right. We can deal with that. So this works out really, really well for me. I get rid of two problematic permanents on the board. I draw the best two cards off the top eight cards in my library. Calamax gets a little bit bigger. So this is a really good turn of events. 
I will untap and I will draw. I won't attack you. Thanks, yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> that feels fair. And now I'm not like as upset. <laughs> I'm gonna start off by tapping four and playing Nibbles of Frost. Nice. Yikes. This is a deceptively good card, I think, in this deck because you can tap down your opponent's creatures, which makes it easier to attack with Kalamax, and you need him tapped to get his ability going. So I think this is a really good card. And then I'm gonna play Shiny Impetus. Oh, another one. And I'm gonna target your Kethril Aspect Warper. Cool, getting so all the So right now that can only attack Jimmy. And it is a 8-8 eight, eight flyer. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry. Okay, so Cassius has goaded Alias's creature, and then Josh goaded Alias's creature. So now the only person that can actually attack is me. Of course. Once again, I find myself in the worst position where everyone's teaming up against me. I'm not even sure why, and I'm almost dead. I'm not sure why either, but hey, it's fine with me. Yeah, I'm sure it is. It is scary though. That that uh, that thing can kill you in like a couple of hits. It can, but you know what? I might have a couple of tricks up my sleeve oh. because these are brand new pre-cons with cards that you may never have even seen played before, Josh. Yeah, that's true. Uh, if anybody out there wants to get their hands on these awesome cards that were designed specifically for our format, mm -hmm. just go to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. You know, it's Commander Christmas this time of year when the Commander product comes out. Yeah. It's my favorite time of year. We also have the Aquaria main set. There's just so many cards that we know everybody out there wants to get their hands on and you're going to buy them anyway. So you might as well use our affiliate link again cardkingdom.com slash command zone when you purchase those cards so you can simultaneously support all of our content not to mention there are some sweet alternate arts out there and speaking of cool art ultra pro another great sponsor of the show always make sure to highlight the best art of the magic cards of every set of every pre-con on their play mats their sleeves their deck boxes it's a great way to protect your game pieces but also just look really cool when you play so theme out your stuff make sure that you're protecting the brand new cards you just got at card kingdom support ultra pro and you're also supporting the show Okay, well, speaking of protecting oneself, uh. I'm curious <laughs> to see how, you, uh, how you're going to protect yourself in this game. You know what? I think I'm just going to make it up as I go, like I usually do. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds about right. All right, and then I'm going to go to combat. And Ailey, I'm sorry, but you have the next scariest board. So I'm going to swing at you with everything. Okay. So there's a trigger on Paco. Mm -hmm. Everybody got to exile the top card of their library. So three of those are non-creatures, and Paco is now a 10-10. Yikes. Those will all be exiled with a fetch counter on them. All right, so before blockers, I'm gonna tap two, and I'm gonna play Tribute to the Wild, which says each opponent sacrifices an artifact or enchantment. Nice. I don't like that. So Kalamax has to be tapped in order to double your instance. But what you can do is attack, and then before blocks are declared, cast your instance, because he's now tapped. So that's an instant trigger prowess. And now there are two triggers. So I'll stack it so Nibbles of Frost goes off first. I'm gonna actually target your commander with that cache. So it will tap and not untap during the next untap step. Oh man. Mm. And then Kalamax will actually copy the tribute to the wild. So each of you will have to sacrifice either two artifacts, two enchantments, or one of each. No. Okay, hold on. Before that resolves, I will tap three mana and play a portal mage. Oh, okay, good. I thought it was gonna get counter. Wait, what's that do again? One of ETBs. I'll make your commander attack Jimmy. Oh, okay. Oh no, so he can block and kill it? That's the plan, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I can't do anything about that, so. Calamax is now attacking Jimmy. Ooh, boy. So Jimmy has enough on his board to double block and kill Josh's commander, which is good for everybody at the table, I think. However, there's still the two tributes to the wild that still have to go off, so. Uh, I have nothing to sack, so I'm gonna pass over to you, Alias. Uh, my next weaver is unfortunately an enchantment. So that's dead, finally, for you guys. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I will sacrifice Rogren Crystal and then Martial Impetus because I still control that. Oh, finally, a card that doesn't just hose me and even better, it gets rid of Cassius's enchantment on Ailey's creature so she doesn't have to attack me anymore. This is great. Maybe I can dodge it for one turn and live a little longer than I thought I would. Okay. Okay, and then Kalamax will get a plus one counter. It is now a 6-6 six, six because I copied an instant. Okay. We're back to combat, except for Kalamax is coming at Jimmy. 
I guess now that I have a chance to block Calamax, thank you, Cassius, I will double block it. Yeah, makes sense. Cool. All right, so I'll order the blockers with Kazua first. Okay. So Kazura will die? Yeah, and so will Calamax. And I'll put him back in the command zone. And then the Beast and Paco are coming at Alias. All right, no blocks from me. You will take... 13. I'll go down to 20. Ow. Pretty good. Ooh. Right now, I'm not feeling super good. I've only got my commander out. He has to attack every turn, so I have no defense. Feels bad. So at the end of this turn, I'm actually not feeling that great. I don't have very many cards in my hand. My commander's not on the board, so my main game plan is not online, and I'm tapped out. I don't know if this attack ended up being really good for me. And that's all I can do, so I'll pass the turn, Jimmy. Okay, well, things have certainly changed in one turn cycle. I'll untap, I'll draw for turn. Well, I will cast Tidal Barracuda. 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 <laughs> this card is really, really, really cool. It gives a Vidalcan orrery type effect to everyone around the table, but it also makes you untouchable during your turns. That means your spells can't be countered. No one can interact with your board while you're doing stuff. I think it's gonna shift how everyone plays around the table, but most importantly, maybe they're finally gonna stop doing stuff to me. Having flash is great. Everybody having flash is not that great because it's scary to attack. They can flash anything in to block. Everyone's just gonna leave up their mana and pass the turn. I think this is just gonna get annoying. All right, Josh. Yeah. I'm gonna swing at you for five. The yeah. war's begun again. Yeah, yeah. We did say it was a temporary. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was, it was like one turn. <laughs> I take five and I go to 19. Ah. And then I'll pass turn. All right, I'll untap. Draw for turn. Okay. And now I have to attack anyone except Josh. Correct. Josh gets a treasure when you do. Okay, seeing as you gave us all flash, I'm not going to do anything, but we're going to move to combat and I'm going to attack you, Jimmy, for seven. Oh, gosh. So there's an attack trigger. I get a treasure from the shiny impetus. Pretty good. Um, I think if I don't do this, I'm going to die. I'm going to tap three and flash out Reclamation Sage and I will blow up the shiny impetus. What? Okay, I can't block the creature, but I can reduce the damage a little bit, which I think is totally worth it here because I'm already so low. Not to mention that if Ailey wants to, she can finally attack Josh next turn with it. So I'm only gonna take five damage instead now. Ugh. Wow. Cool. And I'll go to seven. This brings Jimmy to the brink of death. I've got big flyers. I'm not worried about him. I'm pretty sure I can take care of him in the next round. Nothing else on my turn, go for cash. Okay, I will untap, but my commander will stay tapped. I will remove this coin and draw. All right, I'll move to attacks and Ellie, I will swing at you with the cats and portal mage. Oh man. My life total's not horribly low at this point, but I'd prefer not to take that damage, so I'm gonna show Cash a sweet new card that I've got up my sleeve. Okay, I'm gonna cast Obscuring Haze for free, because I control my commanders, so. Free Very Fog. Good. Free Fog. Oh, free, free Fog. fog. Seems decent. Wow. The reason why Fogs are really good is because in Commander, a lot of times people just go off and then they, they only end up swinging at you one time, but it only takes that one time, so being able to waste somebody's attack step is really valuable. Very nice. Uh, I'll pass my turn. Man, those force cards are so good. Yeah. I'll untap. I'll draw. I would love to attack Ailey for a little bit here because she is getting a little scary, but she's got all her mana untapped and she can play things at flash speed, so it's just too scary. I can't go at her. Go to combat. Okay. We'll share some love, but Cash, you're at 40. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cash, I'm going to swing at you with Paco and Jimmy Niblis of Frost is coming for at you for three in the air. Okay, trigger on Paco. Everybody got to exile the top card of their library. I put a fetch counter on oh. them. So two of those are non-creatures, so I'll get two counters on Paco. So it's a 12-12 now. <laughs> I feel like this dog has never whiffed. But it definitely has sniffed. <laughs> <laughs> so now we'll go to blocks. I'm no blocks. Take 12, go to 28. And I have no blockers, I'll take three damage and go to four. Dang. Oh, all of a sudden my hopes of continuing to survive in this game have just all but left. Maybe they'll just see me in the corner crying sad and lonely and just forget about me. That's my plan. That's the best plan I can come up with now. 
And then, I guess stuff has flash, so Jimmy, enjoy yourself. At the end of your turn, Josh, I'm gonna tap three and flash out Ukima Stalking Shadow. Seems decent. Game life important. This card can gain me a little bit of life here, but I don't have any way to really pump it or sacrifice it. It's pretty much all I can do right now, so I just gotta cross my fingers and hope it works. Also, on Josh's end step, because I can't do anything on yours, I would like to cast Unbreakable Bond and get something back from a graveyard. Oh, nice. Oh, to the battlefield with a lifelink counter. That's a uh, Hornet Queen. Ro, ro. You call it Hornet Queen. <laughs> It'll enter the battlefield with a lifelink counter on it and create four 1-1 one, one insect tokens. That's just my life. The very first card I got into my graveyard is now coming back hot. Hornet Queen on the battlefield, four 1-1 one, one tokens with it. So now I've got this line of death touchers. Anything that attacks into me is gonna die. Anything I attack into is dead too, so I'm feeling real safe at this moment. Oh no, one big flyer? Sure, maybe I could have found a blocker or a way to remove it, but five new creatures in the air that can all swing at me? I really gotta get desperate here because if I can't stop that, that is definitely gonna take me out. That was a play. That, that's, that's, Josh, I never want to yeah, attack maybe you, you again. Maybe you should attack somebody else. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> and I will pass the turn. Okay, I'm going to untap and draw my card for the turn. Okay, so I'm definitely dead to Ailey's board here, but I do have one card in my hand. Maybe I can pull off a miracle, so I just gotta hope it works out. Okay, I have 11 mana, so I'm just gonna tap all of it. Ooh. And I'm gonna cast Genesis Hydra for nine. Oh! All right. I think that this is probably his best play. He gets to search the top nine for an answer, something to help him get out of this really bad position. Look, I'm not even sure what's in the deck that could potentially save me in this situation, but you gotta just hope for it. So let's see what we get. So I'm gonna reveal the top nine cards in my library and I can cast a non-land permanent with CMC nine or less from among them onto the battlefield. Hmm. Uh, nothing good here. Yeah, I like that. Oh gosh. Okay, so the two cards I'm looking at here are Propaganda and Mind Leecher. Here's the thing, regardless of what I play, Ailey is still gonna be able to kill me in the air. So I think blocking and trading with one of her best creatures is gonna be a lot better than just sort of making her use her mana. So I'm gonna go with the Mind Leecher. I'm gonna put Mind Leecher onto the battlefield. It's a 5-5 five, five flyer. And the rest of the cards are gonna get shuffled back into my library. Sweet. I mean, sure, it's a big guy, but I can deal with that. This is just too bad, because unfortunately one big flyer is not gonna save Jimmy in this case. I'm actually not feeling great about the recent developments in the game. Ailey has slowly become the most scary player, and now I don't want Jimmy to go out, because it feels like Cassius and I are gonna need his help if we're gonna equalize. All right, you know what? Blaze of glory, here comes Jimmy Wong. <laughs> going to combat. Classic Jimmy. I'm gonna swing these three creatures at you, Ailey. Me? Mm. Yeah. All right, I will block the 5-5 five five with one of my little death touchers. Okay. Sorry, Cash. He did good, though. He did. Take four, down to 16. And that's it for me. Pass turn to you, Ailey. Uh, on your end step, I'm gonna crack my married landscape. I'll find two swamps. And put them on the battlefield tapped. Nice. All right, on tap. Draw for turn. <laughs> well, that's I don't like that noise at all. No, 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 you don't. Know. I'm gonna cast Selective Adaptation. Oh, man. That's super good. Selective Adaptation is a new card with the Commander set, and it is so sweet. It's gonna put a card on my battlefield, it's gonna put cards in my hand, and it's gonna put cards in my graveyard. That is everything that my deck wants to do, so <laughs> yeah, I'm keen to fire this off. So okay. grab the top seven yep. cards. Alias already has the best board position. Let's hope she doesn't get anything too bad. Fingers crossed. All right, let's see what I got. Mm, okay. Oh. Ruh, ruh. So the cards without keywords go into the graveyard. Soul of Innistrad and Solemn Recruit into my hand. And then Sunblast Angel is coming down hot. Ugh. That's terrible. When it enters the battlefield, destroy all tapped creatures. Okay. Sorry, Cash. Yeah, Perfect can't do anything about it. That's not nice. Wow, this is about the worst thing I could think of. That just wipes my board, wipes Cash's board, Ailey's board is still intact, Jimmy's about to die. I don't think this could get any worse. I mean, my board state wasn't much, you know, but it, it, it was something, but now it's nothing. Things couldn't be going better. I mean, I've got an absolutely monstrous board state. I feel like at this point, this game is mine to lose. 
Um, when Yukimi leaves the battlefield, uh, it deals X damage to target player and they gain X life or X is its power. So I'm gonna deal two to you, Ailey, and I'm gaining two life. I take two. I go to 14. Now we'll go to six. Hold on, this is actually really, really good for me because when Ukima dies, I gain two life and I can block her biggest flyer and she can only hit me for five, which means I go to one. So am I gonna actually live here? If I do, that's an absolute miracle, but holy crap, Ukima, that two life is gonna be huge. All right, move to combat. Okay. Jimmy, Catherall, and an insect are coming at you. And then the three other bugs are coming at you, Cash. Okay. Before blockers are assigned, mm -hmm. I'm going to cost D-Spark to get rid of your flyer. Oh man, four or greater. Oh no, no flying blockers. I why, why do I even bother talking? You know, it just seems to get me in trouble these days. So there goes all my hopes and dreams. Goodbye, cruel world. Okay, well, with no blockers, Jimmy is definitely getting KO'd. So what we gotta do is cast our spells before he's gone while we still have flash. Before combat damage, I'm going to tap for six and play Locust God. <laughs> Oh, oh, come on. Oh. I thought I was the only bug it's a, generator. Yeah, it's a bug showdown. So Locust God is scary because with just a little bit of synergy, he can start generating so many tokens and I won't be able to get through to kill him. This is a very, very powerful card and it's a very big problem. Uh, before Jimmy dies, I'm also gonna flash out something, a nascent metamorph. Okay, that's pretty cool. So this is a new card from this set and it's super interesting. When you attack or block, you don't know what it's going to become. I think this is actually good for me in this situation. We've seen a lot of people get lucky on this episode and I think now it's my turn. Hopefully I can get something cool. All right, go to blocks. Uh, I will not block with Locust God. And I will go down to 24 life. All right. Uh, I will also not block but not because I have a choice. I will take six and go to zero. See you later, Jimmy. Bye-bye. So I get killed by a bunch of Ow, ow, what the? Oh, oh that one killed me. Alrighty, I gain two up to 16. Uh, that's gonna be my turn, go for it, Cash. All right, uh, untap and draw. I will trigger Locust God and I will get Flying Bug. Bug. So now it's down to three players and it's kind of 2v1. Cassius and I gotta team up and quick if we're gonna have any chance here. Josh, I feel like this is kind of a bonding together moment that we... Yeah, she's definitely more scary. This is scary. I know, it's but... It's not scary, just bugs on demand. But we know you just drew two other cards, one with double strike. And one of them gets cards back yeah. from the graveyard. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so we're not really feeling too bad for you. <laughs> right now. Uh, I'm gonna tap for four and uh, use the Locust God's ability to draw and discard. Then I'll make another bug. And then I will use Locust God's ability again to draw and discard a card. Okay. Make another bug. So looting for four is not great for me at this point, but I need to find answers. I really gotta find something to deal with her board state. I'm also getting an insect out of it, so I'll be able to block her stuff. It's not a bad play. I will pass my turn. Okay, I will untap, I will draw. I'm gonna the, warn you, I am going board. to be a very little help. <laughs> <laughs> so. This thing might be cool. Yeah, well, who knows here. what I get. I'm definitely swinging with it. <laughs> so we're gonna go to combat, and I'm gonna swing the nascent Ooh. metamorph at Ailey. Oh boy. Yeah, we're gonna roll the dice. Now the question is which deck? So Cash's deck has a bunch of cycling cards and I don't know what the creature quality is. However, Alias's deck, it's all about monsters with keywords. So she's the one that's most likely to give me something huge and cool, something that'll turn around this game for me. So, Ailey, yeah. you're gonna reveal cards until we hit a creature. Come on, something big, something with some value on it. Come on, something that does a lot of damage. Please don't hit anything good, please don't hit anything good, please don't hit anything good. Okay, Soul nope. Ring. Ugh. Sacred oh, Tribal! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Come on. That's so trash. So my nascent metamorph becomes a Sakura Tribe Elder. <laughs> uh, there probably wasn't really too many worse hits in her deck, right? Like this has gotta be one of the worst ones in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for you, Josh. Uh, yeah, do you wanna block? Yeah, 100%. Okay, in response, I'll sacrifice my <laughs> Sakura Tribe Elder. I'll find a forest and I'll put it onto the battlefield. 
Dude, so much value. <laughs> this is the classic Josh Lee Kwai engine right here <laughs> in action. And then, uh, yeah, I don't have anything else I can do, so I'm gonna cast Kalamax for a second time for six mana. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Lightning butt is back. <laughs> the unfortunate thing here is I don't have any more instants in my hand. In fact, I have only lands. My life total is also pretty low. It's likely she's gonna wanna take me out first. My chances in this game, are they're dwindling. Yeah, are you happy with our alliance? Did I, did I, I mean, I mean, I look, hey, it, good times, bad times, you know, we're together in on this, you know? It's looking like Josh has run out of gas and it's coming up on her turn. She, her board state, we didn't affect her board state very much, if at all. So it, it's just not looking good. Hands up, draw for turn. Uh, gonna move to combat? Yeah. And Josh, I'm coming at ya. Okay. Catherall, Hornet Queen, Sunblast, Angel, and an Insect. Uh, well, I have no flyers, so how much is that? Uh, 12 damage. Okay, take 12, I will go to seven. And then I'll gain two. Jeez. And then second main phase, I'm going to cast Soul of Innistrad. Oh, that's not great. This card is super cool. Not only is it a massive death toucher, it also has a really sweet activated ability that lets me fish cards back from my graveyard and put them into my hand. So I'm just gonna smother these two with card advantage. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're paying four to loot. Good and she's like five to get, just straight up get a creature in the hand. Well. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be my turn for now. So go for cash. I will untap, draw, and trigger. I will get another book. Nice. I'm going to tap four, activate Locust God's ability to draw and discard. Uh, Locust God triggers on draw, I'll get another bug. Five bucks. Five bucks. That's a force. Here's the thing, when somebody's using four mana to just draw a card and discard a card, the fact that they're doing that tells you that they don't have anything good in their hand. The one thing I'll say is he's got a token deck. It's built to take advantage of having a lot of creatures. He maybe has a pump spell somewhere in there, in which case with all those flyers he's making, it's possible he could steal the game. He might be in a better position than it looks like. Then I will tap for five and play Spell Pure Phoenix. When it ETBs, you may return instant or sorcery card with cycling ability from your great ritual. Oh. Yeah, but I don't have anything, so uh, I cannot. Switch. Oh, you're just playing it as a 4 2? Uh, yeah, it's a 4 2 flyer. Ew, that sucks. Like, it's pretty terrible. Yeah, so playing this Phoenix right now and getting nothing from it seems really bad, but. I need blockers, so I need flying blockers. My only plan right now is to just stay alive and try and find some answers. And then I'm gonna declare my attack step and swing five bucks at Ailey. All right, uh, no blocks, I take five. Ow, not the face. <laughs> All right, take five. She is at 13. At this point, I'm a little bit concerned about these locusts because it looks like Cash's gameplay now is just swarm me with these little critters. I'm ahead right now, but if he rips a pump spell off the top of his library, then that could spell bad news for me. I need to close this thing out and quickly. I'll, I'll, I'll pass turn, yeah. All right, I will untap. I will draw. Can I just attack with both and be like, whatever? Because I'm dead. Anything you do at this point is just like extra, honestly. Ailey, I'm gonna go to combat and I'm gonna swing at you with a 4-4 four, four and a 3-3. Three, three. All right. I don't have any flyers, so I definitely can't stop her from killing me next turn. So this is just me trying to do any damage I can to Alias on the way out. I will block both. 4-4 uh, four, four with the 6-6 six, six, and the other one with the 1-1. One, one. All right, the beast and the insect will trade. My commander will just die. Sweet. I'll put it in the command zone. And then I'll play the last card out of my hand. Solemn Simulacrum. Oh. <laughs> Because what I need womp, womp. is more lands. I will waste everyone's time and I will search for a forest, put it into play tapped. Yeah, so Josh, Josh is no help at all. I think I'd have a better chance in this game if, if Josh could help me out just a little bit, but I mean, he's really he's really got nothing for me at this point. Uh, and then I guess, feels kind of pointless, but I will replay Calamax for the third time for eight, for eight mana. Cool. Okay, and then I will pass the turn. All right, on your end step, I'm going to activate my Soul of Innistrad ability and return three target creature cards from my graveyard to my hand. Three. It's three? Yep. Which are Soul Flayer, Nyx Weaver, and Slippery Bog Wander. Wow. Oh, this is bad. So, yeah, she effectively just draws three cards because she gets three cards from her graveyard, puts it into her hand. This is a level of card advantage that I just don't think Cash is going to be able to keep up with. This is going to be tough. All right, untap. Draw for turn. 
Sir, I'm going to kill you now if that is alright by you. Hmm. So Josh is almost dead. I need to kill him. Let's deal with Josh. And then we turn our attention to Cash. Okay, combat. Yep. All right, Josh, I'm coming at you with Cathro and the Hornet Queen. And Cash is coming at you with the Solvent Strud. All right, I have no cards. I have no flying blockers. I will take exactly seven and die. And then I die to a bunch of flyers. No! I uh, have no blocks and I will take six damage. And I gain two life. So Josh is out of it and it's it's me and Ailey one-on-one. -on -one. I think that if I can draw the right card, I could really get back into this game. I could steal this one, but uh, it's gonna take some careful gameplay. Uh, second main phase, I'm gonna cost Nyx Weaver yet again. The bug is back. So the little spider's back on the battlefield and once again doesn't look like much, but I think he's gonna be a pretty key part in how I win this game. And that's gonna be my turn, so I go for it. I'm gonna untap all my stuff and then I will draw for turn. Locust God will trigger and I will get another insect. I'm a little frightened of these bugs, I'm not gonna lie. I'm going to activate Locust God's ability to draw and discard and get one more bug. <laughs> Seven insects now? Seven insects. Oh boy. And then I'll tap for four and play Braylon Sky Shark Rider. Oh. Ooh, that's pretty good. Yikes. Okay, well, this is interesting. So now, whenever Cassius loots, it's going to trigger Braylon and it'll do damage to Ailey. And her life total is actually pretty low. Plus, when Cassius does that, he's making a blocker, which is going to give him time to maybe get some extra turns so that damage could add up. He might be able to grind her down. It's possible. All right. I think I just uh, passed the turn. Okay, on your end step. I don't like those words. I'm going to tap three for the exile effect on Nyx Weaver and return target card from my graveyard to my hand. I want to return D-Spark. Wow, that is... Uh-oh. Mm. Wow. This little guy is awesome. He blocked everything, he threatened people, and he got back my kill spell in the end. What a champion. And then I would like to target your Locust God with D-Spark. I will exile my Locust God. Oh, man. Yay, no more bugs. So this stops my whole plan. Braylon at this point is, is useless. I mean, I'm not looting anymore, so there's no discard, there's no damage. Plus, I'm not making any more blockers, so that light at the end of the tunnel, it, it's not looking so bright anymore. It is your go. Cool. On top, and draw my card for turn. All right, uh, well, let's get swinging, shall we? Move to combat. I am swinging at you with these four creatures, Cash. Okay, so I'll block the soul with Braylon. I'll put an insect in front of Catherall, and then I will put another insect in front of the Sunblast Angel. Uh, Braylon will die, and my two insects will die. Cool, so you take two? Take two from Horny Queen. I gained two. Okay. Nice. Okay, second main phase, I'm going to cast a Chroma, Angel of Wrath. Oh, flying, oh, first strike, flying. vigilance, trample, basically word soup. <laughs> oh my gosh, here we go. There's a lot of words and a lot of abilities on this card, but the one thing that matters most is protection from red. All of Cash's creatures are red. There's not many ways I can think of that he can stop his creatures, so he was dead before, but now he's just extra dead. Oh boy. She's just playing huge thing after huge thing. That seems to be a good strategy. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, no more on my turn. Go for it. Board wipe. So it's looking really bad at the beginning of this turn. My only hopes is to top deck a board clear. Untap all my lands and draw for turn. That's definitely not it. All right. Well, Bummer. Play Niv Mizzet. Oh. Would have been a lot better with Logos got out. Yeah. yeah. Thank goodness I got rid of that Logos God when I did, because if Niv Mizzet was on the battlefield too, whoo boy, things would have gotten out of hand real quickly. It's a great card regardless, but I really don't have enough on the board to synergize with it. So, I mean, it, it's not going to do enough to keep me alive. And then I'll play the last card in my hand, which is Crystalline Resonance. Mm. Yeah, that card's not super great when it's the last card in your hand. Yeah. I haven't drawn a cycling card since like turn five, so I'm basically just playing it because it's all I have. Yeah, this is, this is not looking good for your boy. I will pass my turn. All right, untap all the things. Drop a turn. All right, before combat, I want to cycle Void Beckoner just to see what's on top of my library and put the Death Touch counter on Sunblast Angel. She's got more cycle cards and than I do. Draw a card. Okay, then I'm going to cast Daring Fiendbonder. 
which I just yoinked off the top of the library. Okay. Pretty good. So now I'm just in full-on swing mode. I want to kill Cash as quick as I can. I don't want him finding any answers, so it's go time. Everything in. All right, I am swinging at you with everything. Roar! Roar indeed, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna block the Hornet Queen with the Phoenix, and then I'll block my five bugs versus your five biggest creatures. Minus a Chroma because she has protection from red. All my stuff dies. Some of yours. Cool. Wow. And I take seven damage. I gain two from Hornet Queen. Um, yep, yeah, that's it for me. Pass turn. I'm not really worried at this point because even if he does draw into a Boyd Wipe, I've got so many ways to bring creatures back from my graveyard and I still have a full hand of cards, so we're sitting pretty. This is gonna have to be a heck of a card right here. Yeah, I'm gonna untap all my lands and draw for turn. When I draw my card for turn, niv it triggers and I will deal one damage to your insect. Whatever the answer was, I didn't draw it, but I have one more draw from Nib Mizzet. All right, so I guess I'll just activate Nib Mizzet and see what I can get. Draw a card. Nib Mizzet will do one damage to your face. All right. I take one damage to my face. <laughs> so I draw that card, and that also was not the answer. All right, okay, kill me however start. you're gonna kill me. I uh, will pass turn. Gonna untap everything, I will draw a card. All right, and without messing around, I am swinging in at you with everything. <laughs> <laughs> good game, good game, good game. Good game. <laughs> so I really died to Soul Indestrad, so, but like, what does it look like? Does it just rip the rip the soul up, rip the soul out of you? <laughs> and then I swing with everything and win the game. So this is my first time on Game Nights and it's been an absolute blast. Such cool people to play Magic with. Yeah, it was great. It's really exciting that Ikoria is releasing alongside the Commander products because that means that you are free to build around one of the brand new mechanics. We've got Mutate, the Ability Counter Keyword. It means that you really can play with the best of the newest stuff. There is gonna be a lot to do in this set. Every year I get excited about the Commander product because I know there's gonna be some new gems in there, stuff that I know that I'll put in my decks and I'm always excited to see new new, fresh commanders. It's been an awesome experience and I'd love to do it again. I, I hope I get invited back and the fact that I killed both Jimmy and Josh doesn't uh, count negatively in my favor. You're never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you made it to the end of the episode. Good job. You finished the episode, and that means you've reached the most important part of the episode for many of you, which is the giveaways. Giveaways. Dun, dun, dun. giveaways. Yes, huge thanks to Ultra Pro, who, as always, has given us a ton of swag. It's all Aquaria themed. There's monsters all over it. This is a really unique time because we've got two sets yeah. that have come out, and Ultra Pro really has given us a ton of things to give away to you. Jimmy, how does everybody out there enter? Well, we have three ways for our viewers to enter. You can enter either through Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. If you're on Twitter, just tweet out a link to this video, this Game Nights episode, and use the hashtag Game Nights, and you'll be entered that way. If you're on Facebook, find the post on our page that shares this episode of Game Nights, go into the comments there, and tag a friend that you think might be interested in the content or might want to watch it along with you, and you'll be entered that way. And if you're on Instagram, just make a post and use the hashtag Game Nights, and if you want, you can make an Ikoria themed, you can make a Commander 2020 themed, you can make it Game Nights themed, themed and you'll be entered that way but you only have a limited time to do so yeah make sure that you enter within one week of the release of this video because at that point we're going to announce the winners and after the winners have been announced well you can't enter to win anymore yeah. Yeah. you don't want to miss out though we got signed play mats tons of swag ultra pro as always coming through big with their great quality equipment all right everybody thanks so much for watching this episode we hope everyone's staying safe out there all right we'll see you next time <laughs>